Yeah, no problem at all. Say that again. No problem at all. Oh, fantastic. Can I hear me too long? Okay, yeah, no, I won't be. Uh, so, maybe about 10 minutes of your time here, so I, I appreciate you taking a few minutes. So, we just have to do one quick little uh, introduction on our end, and then we will bring you in, all right? Sounds good. Sounds good. Thanks again, Coach. No problem. Okay, okay. Ready to go, Simon? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. <coughs> Welcome back to another edition of Two Upfront, presented by ShopFutsal.com. I'm Baxter Colburn. And this is Simon Provan. All right, Simon, time for our women's soccer spotlight here on the program. We have the opportunity to bring in a man that is very well known in the women's soccer game. He used to be the head coach for the Portland Thorns. Now he finds himself in the great state of New York. The head coach of Western New York Flash, Paul Riley, joins us here on Two Upfront. Paul, how you doing, sir? And thank you so much for joining the program today. Uh, it's great to be here, guys. Yeah, enjoying it so far. Only six weeks in, uh, huh? but it's been a great preseason, and most of the preseasons are, you know. So I'm just getting out of preseason now, starting the games on the way, and trying to figure some of the X's and O's out. Absolutely, yeah. You're a couple of games in already on the year. Uh, you let off the season with, uh, I think, what some folks are calling a surprise uh, upset over uh, Kansas City FC. Was that so much of an upset to the media, or more of an upset even in your guys' mind too, going out to take out the defending champions week one? Yeah, I think you can call it an upset, you know. I mean, obviously the expectation um, was not to be the, the reigning two-time champs, to be honest with you. And we got a very young team. Um, I mean, tonight we have a game and, you know, going out and I think we have nine of our 11 or 22 or under, you know. So they have a very, very young team. Um, but, you know, that's the good thing about it. They, feel they don't think about who we're playing, what kind of stars are on the other team. They're, they're not stargazing. They're not looking at the back of the sheds. And I think it's been good for us, you know, we you know, just go into a game and we have our, the way we're going to play and we do the best we can with what we have. And I think it's a good group. They like each other a lot and they work really hard. I mean, their work rate is fabulous. And, you know, anyway, we get three points from Kansas. I think, you know, beginning of preseason, when you said you get three points up the first two games away from home, if we would have taken it, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think what happened was after, after the first win in Kansas, everyone was a bit disappointed with the Chicago game. We never really played. We didn't have as much energy as we did the previous week. Um, and, you know, if we don't have energy and we look fatigued, we have a struggle, you know, we're young, we've got energy, we're hungry, and I think we need to, to be ready to play, and we just went against Chicago, it wasn't a good performance for us. I think we're all disappointed from it because of it, because of what we did in Kansas City, and, and obviously tonight we get an opportunity um, to put things right at home, and the first home opener on New Field, they just put new test out, so it'll be good, it'll be a fast game, um, you know, temperature will be good for us, so... I don't think we'll have any excuses for that. We're just going to get on with it. We're home, and obviously we're playing the top team in the league at the moment, Washington, and you know, they've got a lot of internationals and a lot of quality in their lineup. But um, we're just going to have to upset them and ruffle them up a little bit and you know, hopefully get some good success on it. So, Paul, a uh, question for you. When you were with Portland, you had some more veteran players there, and obviously, as you had already mentioned, you've got a lot of youth with uh, Western New York Flash, a lot of talented youth, though. Yeah. Do you have a different approach when you have, um, you know, a lot of young players versus those veteran players? Um, you know, to be honest with you, I mean, whether it's men, women, young, old, um, to me, it doesn't matter what you coach, you are what you are, you know. You have your beliefs and, and, and the protocol and the process that you believe in, and you provide them with an environment, and then you move on from there. And you know, the thing about Portland was, was more so the fact that the players were never around. I think that's the biggest advantage we have, not the fact whether they're young or old. But the advantage here is that all 20 players are in camp, most of them been here the whole way, and I think there's a big difference to, to getting on board with the train and everybody knowing everything about what we're doing. You know, as opposed to just coming in and out all the time. And, it's very difficult, you know. It's okay to have two or three coming in now, but when you have ten players coming in out of twenty, <laughs> it's very difficult. Yeah, you know, absolutely. To keep some, you know, to, just to keep everything together and hold it together, and you know, players still expect to play, and there's other players working hard at home, and then they come in, and it's just difficult, you know, to keep the whole group moving forward. This one's been a bit easier in terms of that because we are all here, we are all around every day, and you know, preseason with two a days, and you know, they get along really well, and. I think they're excited for the challenge too because there is no expectation. I think every single poll was picked just to finish eighth, ninth, or tenth. And uh, so for us, there's, there's no expectation, there's no pressure. And I think that helps the young team. We just go out and do the best we can with, with the game plan we've got. And, you 
you know, so far so good. Absolutely, but, yeah. You know, whether it's old or whether, I wouldn't say old players, but whether it's experienced players or inexperienced players, they're all the same, you know, they all train hard and, you know, the great thing about the female game is they listen. Uh, <laughs> they, they train their tails off. You know what I'm saying? You give them a yeah. plan, they stick to the game plan. You know, and that, that goes for every team. I can't imagine any, any team I've ever coached have all been the same, Philadelphia, New York, they're all the same, man. And, and that's a great thing about that game, the part of the game in the female, is that if you took your game plan in and, you know, if your game plan's wrong, you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Simon yeah. does that too. You know, Simon's a coach too for that. Team, but we, just, we do have some leaders on the team. Sam Hughes has really stepped up. And obviously, she's got a great chance to go to the Olympics. And I think that leadership's been critical so far. Abby Edwards in New Zealand has come in with good leadership. Al Camp is starting to, to get a grip of the team. Um, you know, there's been a lot of good surprises for me, you know, uh, players that, you know, when you see from the outside, maybe you think, oh, she's okay. And then when you have to coach her, on the ground floor every day, you realize how good they are and how smart they are at football and, and, and what they offer for the team. And I've been really pleasantly surprised by a lot of them and excited for the group, to be honest with you, because we're completely unknown source and nobody knows anything about it. And you know, they're looking at the back of our ships and we'll, we'll lose that. I keep just telling, I keep telling our players, don't waste so much on the back, it's what's on the front. Yeah. So hopefully, yeah, they'll know the names on the back by the end of the season. You know? Exactly. I mean, you mentioned that too. It's not so much about the uh, the name on the back as it is on the front. I mean, being a part of an organization like Western New York Flash, I mean, even just looking at it, you were the 2013 Shield winners. You know, you've won some championships as an organization as a whole through the various leagues that have been around here in women's soccer. But, you know, you're very, you're, you have an established team. It's just maybe right not this exact second if fans are keeping an eye on, you know, what's going on. Obviously, folks judge a team, you know, they live and die by the championships that you win. But, you know, right the last sure. couple of years, it's been Kansas City that's been the, the lucky ones. But that's the great thing about women's soccer, though. I mean, in any sport, though, especially soccer, I mean, look at Leicester City right now in the Premier League. Anybody can win a championship any year at this point right now. So yeah. why why not Western New York Flash this season, right? I mean, you, you <laughs> ladies have a, a good opportunity. We've chatted with a couple of the ladies on your team before, and it seems like there's yeah. really no big ego that's driving your team, which is great because sometimes you find that one or two players that are like, "Oh, it's about me." As, if, as long as I get my, you know, my couple of hundred touches a game and my shots and my goals, you know, we'll be just fine. It's like, no, we're a team. We want to win as a team. It's not about trying to stoke one person's stats. I think, which is good to see. I feel like you're putting pressure and expectation on us. <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to help you out, right. coach. <laughs> Everything you said is completely true. I mean, completely true in our locker room, you know. And, um, you know, the quality of training sessions is really good. I mean, you know, it wasn't for all doing all first. The problem was we only had 10 or 12 at practice, you know. It was always difficult uh, to get numbers in practice. And, you know, the support structure in Portland is amazing, obviously, with the MLS team. You know, the general manager is a fantastic general manager. The ownership is great. It, it, you know, the, the support was just amazing. And, it, you know, I thought we had a really good roster. I think, been given time to develop, the roster would have been really good had they opened around, of course. Yes. Now, this yeah. roster's young, Charlie Philippar, Charlie Philippar, Charlie uh, Namer has put this uh, squad together over the last couple of years with Aaron, and uh, they've given me a really good team, I think, you know, and it's, it's going to be a couple of years. You know, Kansas City, all those players play for me in Philadelphia. I think it's the best group probably five, four, five years to, to really develop into a top team, uh, which they did, and they won a couple of championships with it, and Obviously, now they're starting to uh, retire and move away from the game, but I think this group is young, and mm-hmm. I think if you can hold them together for, for, for three, four, five years, I think it could be a really successful group. But you just never know, you know? Things change, pieces change, and, you know, for me, it was an honor really just to be coaching because, you know, Aaron's been at the helm through all those championship years, and they won a lot of championships. And, you know, when you, when you walk in the facility and you see Marla on the wall and everyone back on the wall, yeah, and yep. Morgan on the wall, and, and Sinclair on the wall, and Sega on the wall and Zero on the wall and the list goes on and on. Exactly, and on. yeah. A very established all, organization. All the top players have played here, you know, and I think the Watchmen has been here. The difficulty for here now is the fact there is a cap. You know what I'm saying? It's a WPS with no cap, so they're able to spend a lot of money to bring the top players here. Now there's a cap. So now we have to put a team that, that likes each other. We have to give them, you know, uh, make it exciting for them yep. in the area. Living in Buffalo and living in Rochester. Yeah. You have to make people want to come here, and the only way to want to come here is and enjoy practice, enjoy the, the environment that they've given them, and, and you know make sure the housing is good for them, and making sure that we're taking care of the players. You know, and I think if you can do all those ancillary things, then the stuff usually goes pretty smooth. And 
know, I think so far so good. You know, it's a change, obviously, in the coaching. Um, there's a lot of young, new players, and I think Charlie and me talk every day, you know, and, you know, just the exciting part is that, you know, we're not quite sure how it's all going to pan out, you know, and from a coach's perspective, I feel a bit nerve-wracking, but for me, it's refreshing, to be honest with you. You know, last year we went to every game, everyone thought Paul was going to win every game, you know, and we go into games without seven of our starters, and people would still expect us to win. Which is so good, yeah, that exactly. Was expe- that was just the expectation there. Now, you know, fully healthy team, and nobody expects you to win, and everybody's here, so... Yeah. <laughs> not so bad, you know? Exactly, that's so how bad. it goes sometimes. So we don't go into it. I don't think we get into any game just thinking, you know, we're going to get beat here, but I think the challenge for us is... Um, you know, what is the temperament of the younger players going to be like? You know, mm-hmm. the big two or three new players stepping into the lineup tonight. You know, what will they, how will they handle the pressure of their first game in NWSL? And will it be something they just embrace? And, you know, we've taken as much pressure off them as we possibly can and just tell them it's a process and there's another game in the process. And, you know, if it doesn't go that well, then we'll get up tomorrow morning, we'll get back to work and, and we'll put it right, you know. So, so trying to make it easy as we can for the younger players to, to get the job done and, and hopefully it'll work you know, in our favor. Paul, I'm uh, I'm the elder statesman uh, elder statesman on the show here, <laughs> and uh, I always like going back and, and seeing you know what leagues the head coaches of of any of the top American leagues have played in, and um, you know I recognize quite a few of the teams that you've played on. Of course, uh, it looks like you spent some time with the Long Island Rough Riders and maybe played a season with Tony Miola there in goal. There's actually yeah. an important part of this question. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're you're still coaching in a fledgling league, a league that's only been around for four years. Do you rely on some of your experience playing in the the uh, you know the mid '90s in in the U.S. And, and and trying to push those leagues forward? Do you rely on that experience with pushing the NWSL forward, or is that that's just your experience and, think, and it's what yeah. you use? And I think every experience in the game, that what it is, what built the coach. You know, having coached in the men's side, you know, I played the rougher than I coached them, and they, when I coached them, it was the second year in MLS. So a lot of the players, you know, Chris Armas of the world, the left the Rough Riders, uh, we had a championship team in 95, and then, um, you know, a lot of them went to MLS. And, you know, I started coaching them in the A-League, and those experience of coaching top players, and I think they're never league, you know. I think they're really important. And, you know, part of being a, you know, I was the captain of the team, and the old was in goal. Not an easy job, was it? Yeah, you know, I'm right. the captain, and there's Tony Miola, who's bigger than bigger personality in the world, going to the World <laughs> Cup, and, you know, you got to you got to tell Tony to uh, you know, calm it down or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, you establish a great relationship, and you know, me and Tony, you know, we still talk. And Thanksgiving weekend, I'm coaching the U17 girls team. I bump into him; he's coaching the U15 girls team, the daughters team. You know, we have a good laugh, and I think mean, that's part of the game. It just never changed those type of relationship. And, you know, when the Rough Riders had a Hall of Fame in Long Island, you know, a month ago, and you know, we got inducted. I got inducted. Giovanni Saperazzi got inducted. Wow. Uh, uh, okay. Ruin. Jimmy Rooney, who's, you know, with Tony Miola now, and Mike Masters, and Kevin Anderson, and Danny Moore, and all these big names, and it's just great to see everybody again, and you all think to yourself, you know, 16 of that team is in coaching, and, you know, we were, it was a fun group to play with, and a memorable group to play with, I think you take those experiences for sure, and, you know, I used to say to our girls all the time, you don't know how good you got at me to play Cape Cod on a on a Saturday and I go up to Boston and play on a Sunday, you know? Yeah. <laughs> play back-to-back 90-minute games, you know what I'm saying? Right. I'd probably go out on the night, on the Saturday, and go out on a Saturday night, you know? So they, they've got it they've got it made for them now, but they have to play one game in a week, and the preparation is perfect. And, you know, a lot of the soccer guys have gone through a lot. You know, there's a great commercial with the Heineken commercial where I am soccer, you know? This right, is yep. Where this 30 years ago, no one knew my name. And yeah, I, I thought that was a great idea you know, by them. It's come through all these times, and, and now we've got GPS information on players. Now we've got, you know, we know what they're eating. We know how to sleep. We know <laughs> just about everything. You know, they didn't know anything about us. We'd be out Saturday night before the game next morning. We'd do all right, you know. So Absolutely. I mean, obviously the game's changed. And all the nutritional side and everything. And I think the advancements have been fabulous for the sport. And you just, you know, the one thing I make sure is it's not paralysis by analysis, you know. We don't over analyze it. We give the players as much information as we can without destroying their confidence and without taking away exactly. from the natural beauty of the game. I think that's always been the, the time balance. But they made a lot of good friends through the, through the years. And, you know, we still talk all of us. And we're all in different, you know, he's in Jacksonville now, Tony, and, and I'm in Buffalo, you know. And, and next year, who knows? You know, I'm right. in New York. You just never know where you, where you end up and what you do. But every every great experience is so different, you know. People said, oh, you're not going to like it in Buffalo. And, you know, <laughs> I love it. 
you know, in Portland, I was in coffee houses every day. <laughs> I was in coffee house, which, which I'm sitting in now, talking to you from. And, nice. You know, just the thing, you know, and they make it good for the players, you know. You give them restaurants, and I think all of a sudden, Buffalo's not a bad place to be, you know, and I think that's really important that you can offer the market and make sure that the market's good for the players and you, know, you can bring some, you know, we've got foreign players and we've got a Korean, we've got a New Zealander, we've got a Colombian, we've got two Canadians, um, we've got a Nigerian, uh, so, I mean, we've got a good balance of different types of players and, yeah, it's been really fun so far, I have to be honest with you, it's a lot well, of fun so far. That is one of the beautiful things about the beautiful game is just the diversity of culture you get to experience on, you know, a roster with 22 players on it. That's, uh... That's it's pretty awesome, and hey, you know, one thing you got to do is maybe give Tony a call and, and have Jacksonville Armada and the uh, Western New York Flash have a closed door scrimmage or something yeah. like that. <laughs> 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 Tony, if Tony plays in that, make a playoff run. There you, so, there you oh, go. <laughs> hey, we'll come and do the game for you too. Well, Paul, we appreciate you taking some time with us today here on Two Up Front. Uh, good luck the rest of the way, and uh, hopefully, we can check in with you a little bit mid season if, if if possible. Sounds good, guys. Yeah, and right. hey, and Thanks hey, congrats. Congratulations on the uh, on the Rough Riders Hall of Fame nomination or uh, e- uh, election rather selection. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, it was, it was a great night. It was a great night. Absolutely, it was a great night. All right, Paul. Well, thank you so much, Paul thank Riley, head coach of the Western New York Flash, here on Two Up Front. We are going to run to a break. When we come back, we've got much more action for you in store. You're listening to Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com.